It's Tuesday, December 29th, 2020. Sego. I'm David Lahash, and welcome to another edition of Kahnawagi 911. On today's episode, we will be talking to Robin Delarone and to Lloyd Phillips of the uh, uh, task force here today. Sorry, just looking around to see who's here. So let's get right to it right now, and we will talk to Robin Delarone, who is the executive director of the Kahnawagi Education Centre. Robin? I'm pleased to be here this morning or this afternoon to speak to everyone uh, and to provide an update in terms of uh, what people can anticipate uh, regarding Kahnawake schools and our reopening after the holidays. So first uh, and foremost, just want to also wish everyone uh, happy holidays. Uh, hope you're safe. Hope uh, you're having you know some things to do to keep you busy during this uh, challenging time. So to begin with, uh, when we left for the holidays, we did release information about what you could anticipate uh, in terms of uh, education in Kahnawake. So I'd like to uh, recap what was uh, planned for our schools, for our children and our community. Our uh, students will be um, uh, opening the doors on January 5th uh, to those students and to those uh, families who were uh, originally on site with us when we did close uh, for the holidays. So just to be clear is that at the time we did um, really scale down in terms of the numbers right at the beginning when the onset of the school year. And our numbers were really signif significant in terms of opening. Uh, following that, um, we did also scale down our numbers uh, quite a bit once again when we entered into the red level. So at that point in our schools, we only had students who were um, uh, students of parents who were essential workers. And our schools also had students on site, on premises, who were uh, also of, uh, vulnerable or at risk students who needed extra support and interventions. So keeping that in mind, the other half of the population is really um, currently um, receiving services in terms of education either through remote or home learning services that are linked to our schools. Uh, at the onset of our opening, we were really, Kahnawake has really been um, ahead in terms of providing care, providing prevention, uh, health and safety guidelines for reopening of our schools. And our measures really have been uh, far exceeding what the province and the provincial schools are uh, provided at, as they open their doors. And with that, I have to say that um, we will continue that when we uh, reopen our doors once again you know, on January 5th to uh, the students who are uh, going to be returning. Uh, what is also important to know is that um, we did make some changes in the calendar. On uh, January 4th is going to be a, a PED day. So to be clear once again is that the students who were already on site um, prior to the Christmas closing will be returning on January 5th. Um, but what we are and would like to um, send a message out to parents is that if you wish, if you still feel uh, or you're capable um, to keep your child home from the January 5th to the Friday, then we strongly encourage that and, and will support that. What we are asking is that um, you do contact your respective school and inform them that you would like to keep your child home for another week um, and inform the school and the school will contact you in terms of providing any extra services uh, or assignments that you may need. We have had questions um, and I have seen some concerns and uh, regarding why are our schools opening back on January 5th. We uh, have really in Kahnawake taken measures that, you know, as of during the holiday season, the visits were um, ended. Uh, we have had during this period of time right now and the period of time uh, of this coming week is a two week window for us to be able to say that we um, have put the trust in the community and parents um, to be uh, proactive, to take measures that are necessary. And with that, what we're going to be doing is um, keeping that in mind that we will be opening the doors on the 5th. Um, we have and require the health monitoring that 
parents ch check out the, um, the forms to make sure that your child does not have any symptoms sending them to school. Uh, the same with our educators. Our educators every day require um, a daily health monitoring check before they enter. We have um, very low numbers within our classrooms. Um, we have, uh, you know, real health safety guidelines that we comply with and follow. And keeping that um, in, into consideration, we also sent out a memo and are reminding everyone once again as parents that if you did happen to do any travel during the Christmas holidays, um, that please make sure that you um, quarantine, do not send your child back to school, um, and we really need your cooperation with that. Um, so these are some of the um, in information that I would like to state. Uh, we also um, just want to say that we really take everything seriously. Uh, we are going to make sure that, as I said, everything is going to be um, monitored closely. Um, and as an education system, we are asking that you, as well as community, as parents, uh, also take this seriously. And if I said, you know, that if there's any symptoms, please keep your child home. We're there to uh, provide you with extra work, support. Um, and following that, we can anticipate that as of January 11th, then we will um, continue as we normally had with essential workers, uh, children and vulnerable on our site. Um, so I would just like to say to everyone and wish everyone um, happy holidays and um, look forward to opening our doors once again and providing services to the parents and families at home. Uh, if you have any questions again regarding uh, student needs, remember to contact the school, uh, ask for support, ask to speak to someone, and we will be there to definitely be there to provide support to you as well. Uh, so um, essentially that's the um, report that I wanted to give for education. Uh, I welcome uh, questions and um, you know contact the education center or your school if you need further clarity. Nyamagoa and happy holidays. Thank you very much, Robin. Up next, sorry, I forgot to introduce her in the beginning, but it is Lisa Westaway, and she is the director of the KMHC, executive director, that is, of the Kateri Memorial Hospital Center. Lisa? Thank you. I just wanted to give a bit of an update regarding vaccines because we do have been getting a lot of questions. So some of this I spoke about last week, but we'll just give a bit of a recap. Um, so as you are aware, there are two vaccines in the province that are actually in Canada that are actually approved. There's the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. So the Pfizer vaccine is a very fragile vaccine. It actually cannot be moved um, and therefore it is uh, being distributed from from uh, a location in uh, 1030 in Zistrant. Um, and because of the fact that this vaccine is very fragile and cannot be moved, the Quebec government has reorganized their prioritization uh, scale and has therefore prioritized vaccinating employees of long-term care facilities, of intermediate resources, and of family type resources. So for our community, that includes the KMHC inpatient, uh, Turtle Bay Elders Lodge and uh, the independent living uh, care. So those three organizations, the employees of those organizations have started vaccination. In fact, last week there were 52 employees who were vaccinated and on the 30th, 6th, 7th and 8th of January, another batch of employees will be vaccinated. So for now, for the Pfizer vaccine, we do get uh, the whole Montérégie area gets very limited um, amounts of vaccine and we only find out the amounts to be delivered um, every day it changes and so it's a, an organization process uh, that happens um, always last minute and so we get new information every day and sometimes every hour so that's for the Pfizer vaccine 
for the Moderna vaccine, that's a vaccine that is a little bit less fragile and therefore it can be moved and we expect to receive that vaccine within the community. What we do know right now is that we will be vaccinating our own community within the community. So we won't be asking community members to go elsewhere to be vaccinated. They'll be vaccinated here in the community. We also uh, can say that the Moderna vaccine, right, right now we know that the federal government is in negotiations with the provincial government regarding their prioritization scale. So some of you have heard that Canada um, would like First Nations communities to be prioritized. Um, in fact, Quebec has not prioritized Quebec First Nation communities. They've prioritized remote communities only and so many First Nations communities fit within that. However, we do not. Um, and so the federal government is right now in negotiations with the province so that First Nations communities within Quebec can be prioritized. Until that negotiation is settled, we are subject to the prioritization calendar or scale that the Quebec government has established. So it's important to note that we, we are part of those negotiations between the fed, federal government and the province, but we, um, we do not have a resolution to those negotiations yet. So the, f the Quebec prioritization scale, the way it works is uh, the vulnerable are prioritized first in their prior in their prioritization because it, of course those are the people that if they do contract COVID they will die so they're not prioritizing service providers necessarily they're more pr um, prioritizing the vulnerable and so that's why um, the employees of our residences have been prioritized because should they bring the virus into the residence they could it's a matter of life and death for the residents themselves um, so if we look at the Quebec prioritization scale, and this can be found on the Quebec.ca website, and there is an English site available, um, we see that residences where there are uh, cognitive losses, where, where people live with cognitive losses or dementia, again, the most vulnerable um, residents, they are the areas that will be prioritized for the Moderna vaccine. Um, as of today, what we know is that we expect a delivery of the Moderna vaccine to the Montrégie area, to the warehouse in Montrégie. Um, probably tomorrow, this week, or early next week at the latest. And what we will do is we will be, um, we're already reaching out to families of residents of Elders Lodge and of KMHC inpatient for a consent and for an ex to provide explanations about the vaccine. And, um, and once we do have access to that vaccine, then our team will be ready to vaccinate our own residents, uh, both at KMHC inpatient and Elders Lodge. That is all we know right now. If we look at a more long-term, um, if we look at the priorities, we see that the residences are prioritized. After that, health and social service workers. Um, and after that, the remote communities. And fourthly, uh, that's when we start looking at age categories. So 80 and up, 70 to 80, 60 to 70. Uh, of course, once uh, negotiations between the feds and the province, if they work out in our favor, we will then be able to decide our own prioritization for our own community based on the needs that we have here. However, for the time being, we are, uh, unfortunately, we have to follow the Quebec prioritization. And we do receive vaccines and we are being prioritized even within uh, our Montérégie area. So I just want to reassure the community that we're very involved in the process. Um, like I said, we are at the forefront. We've received vaccines at the same time as everybody else, our employees and our inpatient and Elders Lodge residents will as well. Um, and so we continue to participate in regional, provincial, federal uh, meetings on a regular basis. And as we uh, get more information, we will continue to provide that to you. Um, if things stay in the timeline that they're supposed to be uh, moving forward, 
forward in, we expect to uh, be able to vaccinate the, all of the community sometime uh, end of February, early March. These are extremely preliminary dates. We, uh, like I said, we get new information every hour, um, every day, and so we will continue to update you as we have that information, but we thought it would be important just to repeat some of this information because we see that there's a lot of confusion about, um, about this order and about um, who is getting vaccinated and, and when. So, um, so this is the information we have and I, like I said, we'll continue to keep you up to date. Just a very quick uh, update about the testing site. Um, we have not, uh, so the testing site ha was open on Saturday. It's open again uh, today. Um, it was open yet Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. will be closed on Thursday, Friday, and then open again on Saturday. Uh, we have not tested many people. So I just, of course, it's the holiday time, but I still want to remind you that if you do have COVID-related symptoms, to call and be tested because it's our best way, it's our best line of defense, really. So our ability to test, identify positive cases, do the contact tracing, and um, keep people in isolation when required is what saves us from spreading the virus throughout the community. Um, and we know that this is very difficult right now in the province, province because of the mass of the volume of cases that exist. Contact tracing is very, very difficult for the regional public health teams. And that's what makes us stand out here in the community. That's why we are doing well, because we identify our cases and we ensure that people um, understand what, the, what they need to do when they are positive. Um, so uh, again, I urge you to be tested if you have COVID related symptoms so that we can uh, provide you with the best medical advice and um, information so that we can keep our community safe. Right now uh, we have three active cases so there are two new cases as of uh, today and we still had one active case. We again we expect to have cases so this is not a surprise to us but we have limited contacts right now that are in isolation. This is positive news. Um, the next two weeks are going to be very crucial for us as we wait and observe and follow what is happening as a result of the holiday time. And, um, and we will reevaluate uh, the measures we have in place as we, uh, as we follow the impacts to the community regarding the holiday time. So we, again, we will keep you posted regarding this information. Thank you and Happy New Year. Thank you very much, Lisa. And just a note to our viewers out there today, we are sanitizing our hands. Um, we do it off camera now. We got a few comments that sometimes it's a little bit loud on the microphone and it's a little distracting. But just to let you know that everybody here today, before they come on, before they walk into the room, are sanitizing their hands. Um, and with that, thank you very much, Lisa, by the way, for the update. And now we will be speaking to the Commissioner of Public Safety, uh, Mr. Lloyd Phillips. Lloyd? Thank you, Dave, Lisa, Robin. Uh, I have uh, some in, uh, new information or updated information, but as well, I just wanted to speak more directly uh, to the community, I guess on the overall, you know, uh, state of affairs, so to speak, uh, you know, regarding the COVID-19 uh, virus. Uh, those of you, who, I'm sure most of you have watched the news on a regular basis, and um, the overall situation in, in, in Quebec is, is not going well. Uh, death rate continues to, to climb, you know, they're averaging about 40 people on average per, per day who are dying from COVID-19, uh, approximately 22 to 2300 uh, new cases uh, per day, uh, and, and there is uh, an expectation that these numbers uh, are going to continue to rise over the next couple of weeks. That's why when Lisa mentioned the next couple of weeks are going to be very crucial, uh, that, that's, that's part of the equation. You know, there's no simple no answer uh, uh, to, to some of the questions about uh, why certain things are done. It's, it's a matter of, of a combination of, of many different factors that we have to look at. Uh, but what's happening externally to our community is, 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 is crucial. Uh, so we, we have to you know, keep in mind that these cases, uh, you know, say 2,300 people a day who, who are uh, officially diagnosed or, or come back as positive. Uh, what concerns me is, is the people who are not diagnosed. If there's 2,300 a day who, who are uh, confirmed, we know a lot of people are asymptomatic. We know a lot of people who uh, have very minor symptoms who don't bother to get tested. 
and, and un unfortunately, we have people who, who will have symptoms and, and they will go about their day-to-day -day lives uh, as if there's not, nothing, nothing wrong. You know, uh, so those are, those are things that are, are, are concerning. And especially when you talk about people from out, outside our community. In, in Ganawagi, we know what we said, we've been, we've been doing fairly well and, and, and we've been, we've been, we've been uh, you know, watching each other, so to speak, and, and making sure that our, our families are safe the best we can. But what happens outside uh, Ganawagi and, and other people's homes and, and stuff, that's certainly you know, beyond our control. And, and you know, the more people, uh, I guess, uh, have more contacts, the more movement, the more the chances of, of the spread of, of the virus. And th with the latest measures that were put into place, and I'll speak in more detail in, in, in a minute, the primary goal of that is to stop the movement of people. Because you know, the virus won't move unless people move. And the more people are, are, are moving about, the, the higher the, the amount of contacts, the higher the risk it is to individuals, the higher the, the risk it, it is to, is to our, our community. So you know, we, we're trying our best to take some proactive uh, steps uh, preventative steps so that we don't see a major outbreak in our community. We came close. We came close on a couple of occasions over the past past uh, month or so where we could have had major outbreaks and, and major problems in our community. You now, fortunately, it, it was contained and, and it was able to, to be to be managed. You know, but you no, know, we are at times you no know, lucky and, and, and dodged a, a few bullets, and so. You know, even though we're, we're being vigilant, we're being strategic, strategic in our approach, our approach, you know, we also have you know, a little bit of luck on our side as well. You know, and you know, and this, this good fortune of our community and not having anybody to date die from COVID-19 is only gonna continue to beat on that path if, if, if we all stand together and, and, and try uh, to, to make it through uh, the next uh, little while. As I mentioned last week, I think January probably has the, the highest risk to our community uh, than we had throughout the entire pandemic. Uh, we're seeing numbers uh, of positive cases uh, that is, exceeds uh, the, the first wave. You know, we're seeing the death rate continue to increase. So you know, things, even though people are tired of hearing about pandemic, including myself, uh, you know, you know, the, the, the situation is still very crucial overall. And, and so we have, to, we have to address it as such. That's why when we took uh, into account many of the measures that, that, we, that we, we recently announced uh, last week, uh, first one was uh, after December 28th, uh, no more visitation, uh, household gatherings, uh, so that if, if they're, you know, we're trying to break the cycle of, of increased cases, uh, external to the community as well as internal to, to the community, so everybody's within their household bubble, that in, into itself is, is a safeguard, so if somebody does uh, turn up positive, at least it's, it's contained to, to a small group rather than having it, having it uh, potentially spread to, to other, um, uh, other family members or, or, or friends or, or different households. You know, basically asking people to stay home as, as much as possible. Travel on, out for essential services only. Again, that, that's, that's a, a key point in not having people move uh, about. Uh, we also had the, um, all the organizations in the community um, reassess what truly is essential. And if there's items that uh, work, that's, that's occurring and going on where people got to get together, if, if, if it could wait a couple of weeks or if you're going to wait a month, uh, and then that work you know, could be put on, on, on hold or put on pause until we have a chance to really assess you know, what, what, is, what is going on. And also, obviously, the, the, the big one, you know, we, we did say as of, as of uh, January 1st, December 31st at midnight, you know, for non-essential businesses uh, to close. Again, the, so the primary purpose of that is to ensure we minimize the amount of movement uh, of people. Uh, the healthcare system uh, around us in Chattagui and La Berge, where a lot of people use, uh, all around the province, is very, cru is very it's, it's strained, it's, it's at a very critical point, and I think we, we have our role to play as a community to help protect that healthcare system so that when our people, as much as the outside need it, it's, it's available. I hate to, to see a situation where a community member needs an intensive care unit and it's not available. And it could be non-COVID related because all the beds are, are filled with, with, with COVID patients. That, that, that would be certainly a, a, a sad day. We put all, all these measures uh, last week and we said it was for a 30 day period. And let me explain that a little bit because we're looking at this in, in terms of, of a management of a virus, management of movement of people as much as possible. And we, on the outset, we, we, we are 
talking about do we want to do one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks? We, there's all like different, uh, I guess, uh, time frames that, that were put out there. And uh, said at, at the outset, at the, at the furthest, we will be able to give us 30 days to be able to see what the impacts are, not only from the holiday season, but the overall progression of, 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 um, of the virus and seeing where a lot of the unknowns uh, are, are, are uh, where, where we get some answers to some of the unknowns, including, as you'll, you'll hear about today, uh, know the, um, the new variant of, of COVID-19 uh, has been, uh, first few cases have been identified uh, in Quebec, so there are some unknowns there. And, and we're doing some work, you know, with Dr. Goche and such to, to get our handle around that to, to see what that really means. But certainly, it, it's, it's again, it's, it's, it's a major uh, unknown. But rather than saying, as we've seen in other jurisdictions where, you know, Quebec or Montreal, they said, oh, let, let's, let's put a pause on, on, on non-essential businesses for one week. And then one week came and went, and with the two weeks, with the three weeks, with the four weeks, it just kept increasing. And now we see, as you see in Montreal area, in Quebec area, you know, things have been closed for, for, uh, for a while. Uh, when we looked at this uh, latest measure about non-essential businesses, we said 30 days w w was, was the longest. If things progress, and, and, and we, we can see in, an, in another week or two that things are, are, are stabilizing, the, the threat to the community is, is, is not uh, at an increased level, and then these preventative measures you know, could be uh, revisited, it could be, be, be looked at. So what I didn't want to do was have an announcement made and saying, we're gonna close for two weeks or close for one week and then have to come back and say, I'm sorry, we're extending it you know, by a week, we're extending it by another week and another week. And I think that would cause more frustration and more anger in, in people to, to be able to properly plan uh, how they're gonna go about uh, their, their businesses, uh, how, how the organizations are gonna operate, how households are, 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 gonna, are, gonna, are gonna function. So if we take this in, 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 in uh, in smaller bites, so to speak, or, or smaller increments, if we can get through a two-week period where things are, are, are stabilized, and, and then the task force will look at all the information and we can say possibly, you know, the household gatherings you know, could be permissible at, at a smaller scale. We could have some more essential um, work being done, uh, or non-essential work being done for the organizations, and, and businesses could start to, start to reopen. But let's take it week by week, let's take it day by day and, and, and assess as we go. Uh, as I mentioned, I would rather have people prepare for the 30-day period and, and then cut it shorter rather than having somebody prepare for a week or two and have to extend it. So that's why we decided on, 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 on a 30-day period. So I think it's important for people to understand that, that you know, there is no exact science behind this. It's accumulation of many factors and, and it's a matter of trying to be preventative so that we don't have those major outbreaks in, in our community and, and we keep everybody as safe as we possibly can. Because to date, like I said, we had no major serious illness of COVID-19 in our community. We had nobody die from COVID-19 in our community. And if we could take a couple more weeks to really buckle down and you know, get us over this next, next push, you know, there is that long light at the end of the tunnel. There is the possibility of, of us getting through this you know, relatively unscathed. But, but January is, is going to be that, that, that crucial month. Because there is the vaccine, as Lisa mentioned, it is rolling out. There was 50 some odd people from Ganawaga already vaccinated. There will be more in, 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 the, in the coming weeks. And, and you know, we're working hard to get uh, more vaccine for our community, reprioritization with, with, the, with the feds and the province. Uh, a lot of politics involved there, but you know, if, if we can get, get something here in the community sooner, that's, that's, that's our goal. But in the meantime, we're gonna push hard. We're gonna roll out the vaccine as quickly as we possibly can so that everybody's lives can get back, uh, get back to normal as, as, as quickly as possible. So I just wanted to maybe help clarify a few points and, and maybe give a little bit of rationale to why certain things are, are being done. But the sole purpose is to keep our community safe and keep our most vulnerable people safe, which we've been doing since last March. And, and that's only gonna happen through the support and through the uh, work of all Ganawagadono. And I know it's, it's, it's a tall task to ask uh, these measures from people, but I said if we take it week by week, we assess as we go, and hopefully we'll get through this much sooner than we hope. So with that, 
I know it's been a tough time for everybody. Holiday season hasn't been normal, but I hope you had the best of, of the holidays. I know some of you are still on holiday at this point, but I want to wish you the best uh, and wish you all the best into the new year. I'll talk to you soon. Onigawahi. Thank you very much, Lloyd. Um, just a couple of uh, things we'd like to bring you up to date on uh, over here at Ganawagi 911. Um, we do have a few things going on. Uh, we have a workshop by Wendy Hill, and that's going to be happening on Wednesday, January the 6th, 2021. It's from 6 to 7 p.m. We're going to put all the, um, sorry, 6 to 7.30 p.m. We'll put all the information on the Gunnawagi 911 uh, website for you so you can follow the uh, information and the links that are there. Also, a video was produced by Brent Horn. Uh, it's a wonderful Christmas piece from our elders at the Turtle Bay's Elder Lodge, and that will also be uploaded to the Gunnawagi 911 uh, Facebook page. And with that, we'd like to say thank you very much for joining us here today. Just a reminder, it is New Year's. We want you to be safe. We want you to celebrate responsibly, and we want you to be happy and healthy as we can be in 2021. And we wish you all the best from Gahnawagi 911. And with that, we say thank you. Niawagoa danu, onayiwahi.